Uh, Kairalik, um, I also want to raise the issue of our preparedness to deal with any possible Ebola outbreak. I know that the Minister for Health uh, and the Chief Medical Officer appear before the Health Committee tomorrow, but I'm asking you, Leader, to please arrange for the Minister for Health to come before this House on this specific issue next week, not in the context of dealing with any other issue. I am concerned that there may be serious deficiencies in HSE guidance and protocols supplied to hospital staff to deal with patients with possible Ebola symptoms. I find it very hard to understand how one of the government's first responses to questions was to warn the health unions not to exploit the issue, to make points about resources and industrial relations issues. It is the government's responsibility to reassure the public that all necessary steps are being taken and that all staff are fully trained and equipped and its failure to communicate beyond making general claims of readiness is irresponsible and it's worrying because it suggests that they may not know the full picture in the hospitals. I've been in touch with hospital based professionals. They have told me that in one large Dublin hospital there was no training provided to date to A&E and other frontline staff. No dry runs have been implemented to date. I've been informed that information given to staff so far relates to the assessment and diagnostic, diagnostic processes as well as to protocols to ambulance service but there has been no information about how to apply and remove personal protective equipment, for example, or supervision, supervision or, or observation of the removal uh, of such equipment. I want to know, is all that true? Does it matter? And does the Minister know? It's been reported to me that a patient with suspicious symptoms presented to a Dublin hospital at the weekend, and though Ebola was eventually ruled out, it was not before considerable confusion and debate about protocols and the plan of action as the staff treated the patient. There was an original idea to bring the patient to the acute medical assessment unit, but an on-the-hoof decision was made to move to, a person to, a, to the person to an isolation room in ICU. The support staff involved, and this is the key point, had no training or education about their role and protection, despite the fact that they would need to be involved in non-clinical elements of the patient care process. So Minister Faradkar should come in. He should tell us why screening at airports is right for Britain but wrong for Ireland. He should tell us whether there have been drills and dry runs already in each hospital. He should tell us what protective, personal protective equipment is being made available to staff and to hospitals and whether it's of equal standard in all cases. I have a list of other uh, concerns and questions that responsible professionals have been raising and I would appreciate if the government would give us an account of its stewardship. I think this is the house is the place to do it. I look forward to hearing what the Minister and the Chief Medical Officer have to say uh, to the Health Committee tomorrow. But in any event, I think the Minister should uh, come before the Shannon on this pressing issue of public concern uh, next week and I will push the matter to a vote if necessary. Right.